I'll wait now. I was about to start, but now I'm awake. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call to order this July 2nd, 2019 meeting of the Gallatin City Council. We're going to begin this meeting like we do each meeting with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, Councilman Alexander is going to offer our invocation and Councilman Overton is going to lead us in the pledge. Please stand. Let your heart pray. Eternal gracious God, once again, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful day that thou has created. We thank you for this council and what it stands for. Now, Lord, we just pray that everything we say and do tonight will be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we do pray and every heart say, Amen. Please join me the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you. Now, Ms. Kittrell will call the roll for us, please. Vice Mayor Camp. Present. Mr. Alexander. Present. Mr. Fan. Present. Mr. Fennell is absent. Mr. Hayes. Present. Ms. Love. Here. Mr. Overton. Present. Mayor, we have a quorum. Thank you so much. There are no minutes provided this evening, so we're going to proceed on to public recognition on agenda-related items. This is the time of the meeting where anyone who is here that would like to speak to an item that's on this evening's agenda may come forward and do so. We ask that you give us your name, your address, and limit your comments to five minutes, please. With that, public recognition on agenda-related items is now open. You may come forward. Always down. Uh, my name is Tisha Borders and my address is 2570 Highway 31 E Gallatin. I'm here tonight to give you an update on the Randy's record shop progress. We do have, he's going to pass this out, this is our draft plan for operations. He's going to pass that around. Essentially what we want to use the structure for is obviously a strong focus with music as well as a museum. Um, we also plan to later on possibly offer musical grants, et cetera. So really there's a lot of things that this building could be used for, but that's just kind of a detailed um, operating plan that we're proposing. <clears throat> and I'll get him, we'll pass these around. I only have one copy of these, but this was the uh, proposed site plan that we had done. Um, obviously this takes into account if the right of way actually did happen. So it would need to be, um, you know, reworked if that did not occur. But as you can see on here, really the back buildings and the structures in between, which were the tattoo parlor as well as um, Howard's, those buildings would be gone. So essentially we would just keep that front portion. That was the original Randy's. So we'll pass those around. Okay. Um, in regards to uh, financial commitments, I'm honestly still working on that. I'm trying to get a meeting set up with United Record Pressing, which is located in Nashville. That is the largest vinyl record pressing plant in the U.S. And they had previously um, expressed interest in our project, so I'm just kind of circling back around with them and hoping to get a meeting set up with their CEO. Um, I've also been in contact with Ron Bledsoe, who actually started WHIN uh, Radio with Mr. Wood. So he has a personal connection and is also very interested um, in the project. So that's kind of where we are um, from that 
aspect. And um, I think that's it. That's all I have. Um, my name is Nikki Nobles, and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm here tonight as um, representing Randy's, who's um, been a part of my life. My father was Gene Nobles that uh, helped start Randy's Record Shop in the mail order business. And um, to me, that's just been my life. Um, and I would love to be able to see that Randy's is rebuilt or re restored and the history that's there that I carry in my heart all these many years that uh, you you guys would uh, see that that um, would be a, a much needed effort here and for uh, the citizens of Gallatin. My name is Johnny Griffin, 657 Northwater Gallatin. As y'all all know, I've been working on this project and I work on it every day. Uh, this week, I, there was a similar project in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. It was a recording studio. This actually started and was built in 1946, and they sold coffins in it because it's across from the cemetery. Well, in 1969, a group of musicians decided to make it a recording studio. Well, they did and for a few years, and then they closed it down. It was just bare walls, and the building got in bad shape. The roof had caved in, there was groundhogs living in it. They formed a group of citizens and, and the city, and they had, had different fundraising events. This building now, and I have pictures of it here, is about the size of Randy's Record Shop in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. In 2017, it was voted the number one tourist attraction in the state of Alabama. I talked with a lady yesterday. They charged $15 a piece to go in this. Now, when they got this building, it was like Randy's, four walls, nothing in it. They've gone back and furnished it like it was as a recording studio. From, by 2019, now they only opened in 17, they had over 42,000 visitors from 50 countries. It impacted the city of Muscle Shoals so much financially. They've had to build restaurants out by this building, and it's out in the middle of nowhere. And Randy's is sitting 20 minutes from downtown Nashville, and we have tourists from all over the world. The financial impact that this has done for the city of Muscle Shoals is unbelievable. And I can see the same thing happening here in Gallatin. We have a much better location to Nashville. We have people that will donate. Nikki has memorabilia. Uh, Pat Boone has memorabilia. Lawrence Welk has memorabilia. We have so many people that are willing to donate memorabilia. But I just have to say this, and I know y'all have been patient with us, but we have worked, we never really had a chance to start restoring this building until it was sold to two people here in town, Mr. Fan and Michelle Haynes. Before that, I couldn't even talk to the original people that owned it. You know, I, and they asked me $500,000 for it. Now we have a fighting chance. We're in contact with several big like the record processing company in Nashville. These big companies, I can't call down there and get them on the phone in two or three days and, and set up a meeting with them. And I know we've asked for more time, but that's what it's going to take with us. We, we haven't given up. And like I said, I, I understand the city's point on this building. Uh, I think we could probably, you will have to talk to the owners. But I think we could work out something with them to get rid of, of the biggest part of the dangerous buildings, like the tattoo parlor and all that, and go in and stabilize that other wall. And that would, you know, that would stabilize that building, would make it, make it safer. You know, we just need a fighting chance on this. You know, uh, I've never been involved in any kind of project such as this in my life. 
But I, I, I see what it can do for the city the same way it did in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. I mean, it's tremendous. You know, they say, well, the, the people that know about Randy's are elderly. That's the people now that are up and retired that can start traveling. That's the people that fly into Nashville. That's the people that go to all these, you know, exhibits. They remember all that. You know, this is, if 50, 42,000 people can travel to Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and from 50 countries and pay $15 a head to get in that building, and we're sitting 20 minutes from downtown Nashville and can fill this up with memorabilia that everybody will want to see. We can rotate the, 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 the memorabilia in there. We've already got people. We've got big collectors that have big, huge record collections that are already agreed to work with us to change it. It won't be, you won't see the same thing in Randy's if you go down there a month later. We're going to rotate the stock. All we need is, is for the city and the council to give us a chance and work with us. You know, we're doing, you know, I work on this every day. My daughter works a full-time job in Nashville, and we work on this every day, and we're doing it for the benefit of the city of Gallatin and the citizens of Gallatin. But we need, if at all possible, you know, I know we ask for more time, but, you know, we're, I'm running 100 miles an hour. I may not be going nowhere, but I'm running 100 miles an hour, and y'all are the only ones that can help me. So that's the reason I'm up here again, you know. You know, a friend of mine said he wasn't good at begging. I must not be either. But I'm, like I said, I'm trying to save this for you, your family, their children. You know, once you destroy history, you can't, you can't go back next week. They built a new... Okay, Mr. Griffin, your time is way up. I keep thinking you're wrapping up. <laughs> I'm going to say one more thing. Okay. I've had a lot of people tell me, well, tear that building down, build a new one. In Muscle Shoals, they built a new recording studio, bigger. It didn't work. People wanted to go in the old building. People want to go to Randy's where, where Pat Boone, where, where all the artists, Barbara Mandrell, Johnny Maddox, they want to go in there where history was made. And the only way they can do that is to go in the original building. So I'll get off here before the mayor kicks me out. But <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you and I appreciate your time. Anyone else wishing to speak under public recognition on agenda-related items, you may come forward at this time. Seeing no one, public recognition on agenda-related items is closed. We proceed now to mayor's comments. Um, just a few things I do want to say. Um, I want to say certainly a thank you to the citizens who have attended the planned Gallatin meetings thus far. I think we've had a really good turnout. Thank the council members who have participated thus far. And we still have some ahead, so we can look forward to that. Um, and we'll really encourage people to come to those meetings if they are able. And you don't necessarily have to come to your own meeting. You can come to any of them, your own meeting, your district. But you can come to any of the meetings that are happening. And I'll tell you about those in just a minute. Also, I want to say again a huge thank you to all of the departments who have worked so hard to clean up from the rash of storms, <laughs> the, the never-ending storms. I thought we were going to get another one today, and we didn't. I think we escaped it. So may, maybe we're on a good maybe we're on a good track. But certainly, a lot of the departments in the city of Galton have worked very hard. Um, some of the departments have had to deal with damage to our own property, and several of the departments have had to deal with. Um, damage to or cleanup from damage to our citizens' properties, and then um, other departments have had to help manage issues like traffic lights being out and things like that. So we really appreciate that, and and I've heard a lot of compliments from citizens recognizing all that our city departments have done. So a huge thank you to you all for that. Um, a few events coming up. Of course, the Fourth of July is Thursday, and the Fourth of July celebration will be happening at Triple Creek Park. Festivities start at two. I believe the fire department is doing their mountain of foam at 4. Does that sound right? At 4 p.m. And then the fireworks will be at dark, which will be right around 9 p.m. If you look on social media, you'll find important information about um, parking and traffic for that evening. I also want to let people know that the Sumner County Fair is here next week. It goes July 8th through the 13th. And then next week, we'll resume some of our planned Gallatin meetings. On Monday night, um, planned Gallatin night is with Vice Mayor Camp at Guild Elementary from 5 until 7. On Thursday night, it's with Councilman Alexander at the Gallatin Shalom Zone from 5 until 7. 
And then the final plan Gallatin meeting will be on the 17th with Councilwoman Love at the Gallatin Civic Center from five until seven. <laughs> also next week is Chief Bandy's birthday and the Panda at the Pool Party at the Tommy Garrett Aquatics Facility. That happens on the 13th, um, same day as Chief Bandy's birthday from 10 until eight. Um, and the City Hall car cruise in is that evening too from four until eight. Finally, the next third Thursday on Main is Rockland Road. I um, actually heard some really good things about that band with someone I was talking to over the weekend. And that is third Thursday, the 18th, from 6.30 until 9 on Gallatin's Historic Square. And I think that would conclude Mayor's comments, moving us now to the regular agenda. The first item on the regular agenda is second reading on Ordinance 01906-31. And for that, Councilman Overton is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This ordinance awarding a bid to authorizing funds to be total of three million six hundred thousand for water and sewer reserves for 2019 sewer rehabilitation in various areas of the city. And I so move. Have a motion by <laughs> Councilman Overton, a second by Councilman Alexander. Is that right? You made the second. Okay. Is there any discussion on this? Hmm. No, no, no. It was another noise on my phone. Um, um, so far, uh, we have a motion and a second and no discussion. This is second reading on Ordinance 01906-31. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, please say no. Does pass unanimously. Item two is first reading on Ordinance 01907-32. Vice Mayor Camp is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This is an order appropriating $438,764 of engineering to street, light, and traffic signal count. So moved. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Camp, second by Councilman Overton. Is there any discussion? This is first reading on Ordinance 01907-32. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Passes unanimously. Item number three is Resolution R1907-29, Councilman Fan. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution appointing Haley Meredith to the Galton Electric Power Board. So Motion by Councilman Fan, second by Councilman Alexander. Any discussion? This is resolution R1907-29. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Does pass unanimously. Item number four is dangerous building at 321 West Main Street. Ms. High McCauley and Mr. Chuck Stewart. Well, I really don't have anything to to add, it's really up to this body what you want to do at this point. I don't know if Mr. Stewart has anything further that he wants to add tonight. I have nothing to add. I mean, we all know kind of where we are, and uh, you've heard from the representatives that are here on behalf of the foundation that is trying to, to be formed. So it's um, up to this body. Councilwoman Love? We were giving them a couple of weeks, I think, to get some things done. So could we ask if what all has been done? Well, I think we were asking Thomas. to show us some um, proof of funds right. that some had shown in and uh, that had come in. And I don't. Have you had, could we ask if they've had anything? Mm -hmm. Motion to suspend, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. If someone would like to come forward and address that. Ms. Borders, you're up. Um, in regards to the funds, like I said, I have reached out to several people. It is a little difficult to get meetings set up with, you know, CEOs and that sort of thing in a two-week span. So I'm working on that. Um, obviously, the money I'm looking for is going to require a board decision. Um, hoping, again, the Vinyl Press Company in Nashville, because they do previously had expressed some interest. So I think that that would be a great partnership with us, especially since we want to try to sell records again, like Randy did, you know, back in the 50s and 60s. Um, you know, that's kind of where we are. Again, 501c3, that's been kind of our, our biggest thing because a lot of people, they want that officially in place has been kind of the hang up as well. A 501c3 has been formed, the, the, the yeah, the well, designation from the RS has not been received. Yet. That is correct. That is correct. So mm -hmm. that's that's kind of the hang up. And you can technically collect once you are yes. formed. 
and right. retroactive from when the IRS says that. And, I, and I've relayed that as well, but you know, others have said they really want that, the firm decision on the 501c3. So that's kind of where we are. You know, I guess our biggest question is what can we do? I know we've asked for extensions upon extensions. Um, you know, and I guess big question, if we get that structure stabilized, because obviously we've estimated it's going to be roughly probably a million dollars to get the building completely outfitted. And that's with, you know, museum displays, et cetera. If we get the building stabilized and it's no longer a danger, is that your main concern? No. No. Okay. okay no. I'm going to say the biggest thing. Okay. We've been, we've been how, how long has this been? How, how long has it been going on? Okay. It's, it's about a year. We have not seen any money raised. If, if I had something going on, I could go out and raise a hundred thousand dollars. Correct. I know that personally, I probably right. could. I have not seen any money raised. I have not, not seen any. Is anybody here? No. That's there. our biggest hang up right there is right. let's I'm get gonna, something and show me the money. Okay. That's, I think that's the biggest thing. We, we know the building is, we're talking about asbestos, we're talking about stabilize, it's going to collapse. I'm not so sure y'all go in there and do anything with that building once somebody gets in there and gets going on it. But we've got to see where y'all are going to show us that y'all can raise the money to, to where it's going to be effective. I mean, mm -hmm. that's our biggest hang-up right there, I think. Do y'all not think? Mary, you know, we, we've, I mean, we've heard, and we can go back for the minutes, but we've heard a lot of names that's been thrown out that's you know going to give us money once all this stuff got put in place and two weeks ago we just asked for those people to give us some letter of intents that they intend to fund this and we asked for some letters of intent for all those names that was thrown out there that says yeah i'm going to help you once you get your your nonprofit stuff in place <coughs> but we hadn't seen any of those i mean we don't, I, i'm not sure that they're out there I'll give it, I'll talk. so i just i, I Right. You know, I'm like Craig, mm -hmm. I just, I mean, we keep putting it off and putting it off and putting mm -hmm. it off, hoping that, you know, y'all could <coughs> get this thing together and do it. But right now, I think we're just, we're still going downhill. Well, and I, I understand that, and I know that that's what you expected of us. Like I said, I'm doing my best to make that happen, you know, working full time. And when we started, you know, we had the previous owners, like Dad had mentioned. We really had no contact with them. And plus, what they wanted for that structure was, obviously, we know what it sold for. Um, you know, the, the owners currently are willing to work with us, and I think they see the, you know, the, anyway, anyway, you know, they see the, you know, what we want to do with the structure. Um, I guess my thing is if we get it stabilized, and we did have Wasco, which is a company out of Nashville, they do masonry work. They had given us a quote going in and actually putting steel rods in the masonry walls and then putting, I think, concrete down in there to stabilize the structure. I went back and looked at some notes and previous people involved on the project had also looked at the asbestos and I think the plan for that, it's my understanding it's only in the floor, that there would be some sort of epoxy coating that could go over that and I don't know if Chuck could, could possibly speak to that. Um, but that's a way to kind of resolve that. So essentially, I mean, once that outer structure is secured, a new roof is put on and a back wall, then to me the building is secured. Um, and like I said, I understand your concerns about the money. We have raised some money through a GoFundMe, and that is honestly really just paid for 501c3. We had lawyer expenses, that sort of thing. And again, I think people are not wanting to give big money because they see no work being done on that building. If we could go in and remove the center buildings that are not relevant to the project, I guarantee you people would start giving. But right now, they, right now they see it as kind of a stalemate, and they don't want to give. So to me, problems. that that's a big issue as well. Well, the people you're talking to about donations, mm -hmm. is the 5013C there a hang-up? I think the main hang-up on this thing is people do not see any progress down there. Once they see work being done to start the renovation, I agree, we've been working on this for a year. We never had a fighting chance until Steve and Michelle bought that. We couldn't even talk to the owners. They were asking, well, this went on six, seven months. We have not been working. See, we didn't have a chance. We couldn't talk to the owners. We couldn't do nothing. Steve and Michelle, there's said Steve, have agreed to work with us on this. 
if we could go in there and tear down those old buildings, put a sign out there, restoration started on Randy's, the money will come in. You know, how many people in this room have given any money to help me? Not a one. This has been a one-man operation to try to save this building for the city of Gallatin. I stood up here a few minutes ago and told you what an asset it was to Muscle Shoals, Alabama. They had a hard time on the beginning getting to raise money for that. But once they started work on that building, one guy gave a million dollars. Until we can start some kind of progress on that building, they have the same attitude that some of y'all have. Y'all are not going to fix that building. If we don't fix that building, we won't be... We can't fix that building. Huh? We can't fix that building. I, I, I understand mean, that. That's situation that we I understand. Can but and, for, and there were some offers to help in the beginning, and they were, mine for certain was rejected. Um, that's right. But I, I just think that there is a, um, there are a lot of directions that this could have gone that it has not gone. Well, I can't change what happened then. I well, can just go forward. But I mean, I'm saying even you in know, the last two weeks, my, I think. My goal in this whole operation is to save this building for the benefit of the city of Gallatin. It's not benefit to me, you know. It's not benefiting me at all. I wouldn't be up here, you know, spending my time, and I spend time every day if I didn't think this would work. Well, you know, if you if y'all talk to that lady down there at Muscle Shoals, she went through exactly what I'm going to. They took that building, like I said, Groundhogs is living in, out in the middle of nowhere. And they had a hard time in the beginning of getting people to donate. But once they started work on that building, they did a documentary on them when they started restoring that building, which could happen down here. When they did, one music executive saw it. He donated a million dollars. Before then, they were getting small donations. You know, if, if y'all don't give us a we're not up here trying to avoid you. We're working every day on this. We're, we're working as hard as, I don't know anything. If I knew anything else I could do to make this move forward, I'd be doing I told the mayor today, you know, I'll give money out of my pocket on this building. I told you before the sign down there that says Save Randy's Record Shop, I paid for that. Like I said, there's not a person in this building has given me a dime for this cause, and I'm working to help every one of you in here. But y'all are going to have to help us if we help you. You know, I'm financially not able to go down there and spend a million dollars. My daughter's not. But we want to save this for the city. But there are avenues to progress, and that's what I have tried so hard to communicate and to help with. And the, honestly, the only thing that I know to do at this point is to say that, you know, with this council's permission, I would see, make some contacts and make some calls and do some work myself and see what might be out there. That's what I, you know, I don't under, when I first started this project to save Randy's record shop, I thought there's going to be people wearing my phone out to help me. You, it doesn't work that way when you start a movement. That's what I'm it saying. It does not start but work that way. Y'all would have to understand that we're not putting y'all off. When y'all tell us to do something, well, we try our best to do it. Mr. And Bruce. I see his comment over there that, that you know, he could raise $100,000. Well, help me raise $100,000. Well, my point is, is like, I grew up in Hendersonville. I didn't know who Randy's records was. <coughs> uh -huh. And I've lived here all my life, 55 years. And, and to I, me, the place has gone downhill. Why has somebody not done it before now? Wow. Why let it get to that shape is what okay. I'm saying. Let, to, let, me, to me, okay. I'm not sold on that it's going to be a major tourist attraction for Galveston. Nor am I sold on that. Either. I'm not sold on that. I am not sold on what you're saying. I'm well, not, you're not but, selling but let's me on not what you're saying. let's not have an argument okay. here. Let, let me ask That's what I'm saying. You're not, you're not selling me on what you're saying. I'm not sold on that. Okay. And I won't be. I won't be. Okay. But I think okay. what Craig is also saying about raising money is that there's so many different charities that get out there and have dinners or. Right. Or yeah. And we haven't, there hasn't been a fundraiser. 
I'm, I'm just, I, I yeah. didn't yeah. think okay. what I said. There has but I'm just saying, that's my point. We, I'm not sold on what you're trying to do. Had, but had, we haven't seen any fundraising either. Had, had you ever heard of Muscle Shoals Recording Studio? Okay. No. They were successful yeah. in their, they were successful <laughs> in their efforts and they were successful. And I went back and read after we spent some time yeah. together. And it actually, the documentary was before it ever happened. So sometimes things happen by accident. And this, to a large degree was. Yeah. Well, I don't I, I don't know how to create that accident for us, but I have had some thoughts on some things I might at least make some calls and yeah. stuff on to right. see. Because I don't know. I yeah. just don't well, know that it's there. And honestly, we've counted on you all to do it because from the beginning you right. said stay out of it, we're gonna do it. You know, we don't the city can't yeah. be a yeah. partner, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um you know I you know, if if y'all would just help us on that. When well, you, when, there, you, when you there, keep saying y'all help us, I don't know how much more help we give you. We put this thing off for a year. Yeah, but uh, we we got our we got our city personnel here that we have to depend on to guide us in the right direction, and he's standing right behind you telling you tear the building down, and that's exactly what he's telling us. Well, we, we got a city attorney that says y'all need to do something on this building. Well. So, oh. so my point is, you're saying we had not done anything. We've stepped out there and put it off for a year waiting on y'all to bring us some letters of intent where you can raise some money to do this. We're trying to let you do it, but it ain't happened. Well, we're a 501c, a non-profit. 501c3. Right. We're a non-profit. Okay. Do y'all donate to any non-profits? All the time. Where's our money? <laughs> you, that's not how you raise money, and I think that may be part of the issue. Man, that's how they're raising money. Somebody's raising money. Well, look at um, gals you gals right here. Guys, let's, let's regain some order here. Councilman Alexander's recognized. You know, I really applaud the effort that Mr. Griffin and his staff have been doing for years and years, but I personally would vote to give 100% to build another one. I know you probably want the original, but at this stage, it's too late. It, it is too late. The building is need to be demolished. And, and I, I've sit here while they have kicked this can down the road for a year. And, and, and it's not fair to you all. It's, it's just not fair to you. The, the money is not there. And this council have been over backwards to give you ample enough time to try to make an effort or to get maybe two or three letters of intent from somebody, from celebrity or anybody. We hadn't had that. And we have an obligation and responsibility to the citizen of Gallatin. If somebody going there and get hurt, it's our fault. And, and, and we have Mr. Stewart telling us this building is dangerous, tear down tear down. So I'm at the point tonight to make a motion to have the building demolished. That's where I stand. Uh, Mr. Fan, may I ask you a question? Do you mind? Pardon? May I ask you a question? <laughs> oh, I got a statement for <laughs> <laughs> Johnny got on his soapbox and I understand why, but my question wasn't answered. Yes. Maybe I didn't phrase it right. <laughs> I forgot your question. <laughs> Are you waiting on the government to make you an actual tax exempt organization? That, no, we are. Right, we have filed the paperwork. It's my understanding after talking to the IRS, it could be 180 days. We could not qualify for the expedited 501c3. There is an easy form, but that is for uh, nonprofits who expect not to raise more than 50,000 a year. I did not want to apply for that and then us get, say, 200,000 or what have you and have to start back over. So what I did is the long form. It is a longer process. So can that's- Can you get some LOIs? Do you believe that you can, stating that once you are a tax exempt organization that these people would donate? Is that the hang up they want the, the deduction? That, that is when I was talking to Mr. Bledsoe, who I mentioned previously, you know, he, like I said, has a close connection with Randy, or had a close connection with Randy. Um, you know, he's very involved in the project. He wants to give, but he's still trying to make up, you know, his firm decision. But he wants a 501c3. He's on the board with Columbia Records, and I know they've given. But if I'm going to go out to, like, Columbia Records, 
Sony, whomever, you know, they're going to want to know that I've, I'm already 501c3. Do you think you could get some LOIs contingent on becoming tax exempt? I think I can, but like I said, the two week time frame, which I'm appreciative of you giving us an extension, it's hard to get meetings set up. You know, like I said, I do work during the day, so I'm not as free to kind of go and do these meetings. Um, I've left messages trying to get in touch with people to get in front of different uh, people to get those meetings set up. But I do honestly feel that that has been the hang up because we, we've had, you know, we got $1,000 from one person and we've gotten the smaller donations in. We had a gentleman call us last week that wanted to make a donation on behalf of his father who loved music. And it's just, again, them not seeing the progress, you know, because we've stated if for whatever reason that this project did fall through, we would donate the funds we have raised to, um, you know, another nonprofit, probably St. Jude's. But people are wanting to donate, but they want to see progress. And right now they're looking at it and they're not seeing progress, obviously. And why do they want to give at this point? Do you, you know? think you could get uh, <clears throat> Mr. Bledsoe and whoever to give you an LOI contingent on that? I will try. I tried previously. He is in his 80s. So um, I tried that tactic before when we had another previous meeting and he said, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. So I can certainly make that call again um, and try to get in touch with him. Like I said, I've left several messages trying to connect, obviously, with this being a holiday week. A lot of people are vacationing. Um, so it's hard to get in touch with people within these last last couple of weeks. Well, I as one of the property owners don't have a problem giving them an extension if one of the council members wants to make the motion, but I don't feel it's proper for me to make it being a property owner. Right. My question of you was going to be, um, would it be possible, and Mr. Stewart, you may want to weigh on this as well, for everything to be demolished except those three walls? Yeah, I think that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. We'd have to get with Chuck over here and see what procedure we'd have to do on that. Yes, you you could demolish uh, a portion of, of the site down there. You got to go through the same steps. You have to have the asbestos survey done. If there is asbestos, it has to be removed, and uh, you could you could take down the rest of the site. Uh, one thing I want to expressed to you tonight that I went back and checked it this afternoon after I met with Johnny was that uh, that building will have to be elevated. There's no getting around elevating it. Uh, Mr. McCord will uh, support that. That building is sitting in the floodplain. Uh, if you go in and do an epoxy on that floor, which is four feet below flood elevation, that's, you're still going to have to elevate the building. So the finished floor would have to be raised with the uh, flood vents and a few other things that the, that the code requires. So it's quite a bit of work to do there. And uh, my, in my opinion, if you take the other building down, I'm not so sure that building's not helping hold that one together right now. Uh, you'd have to ask the engineer. That's so that's something I, I couldn't, not knowing how it was constructed, how it was built, I couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just have one question. And I'm afraid I already know the answer, but are, are there any plans for any fundraisers at all? We've been trying again, and you know, you know how this goes. People say, oh yeah, I'm going to help you put together a concert. I'm going to do all this. And I had several people reach out, and then it's crickets. I mean, that's been the story of this project. You know, you've got two people here trying to work on it. We had other people involved previously who were no longer, um, I'll say no comment to that, but anyway. Um, so we're just, we're trying to do what we can. Um, again, trying to do a fundraiser. We've had some of the local, was that the Hendersonville Car Club? Possibly working something out with them that does, you know, the old cars, having a fundraiser of that sort. Um, I did want to speak quickly about the flood because when I took over back in March, April, I started investigating all of this because this is not, you know, it's not my forte. I don't understand it. So I was looking for guidance. And I talked to the city, um, I also talked to the state, and it was my understanding that that structure could be flood proofed. There was no mention about raising the building. And I know you've got the new agreement with the Corps of Engineers regarding, I guess, Town Creek. So I didn't know how that was going to affect the floodway, if that had any, you know, bearings on this, this we building. We would know for some time if it would. Okay. It'd be 
Well, like I said, years. I'm not I'm not knowledgeable with this at all. So that's what I was trying to get information from because what I didn't want to do is raise money and then someone come in and say, well, you've got to raise the building, you've got to do this, this, and this, which really negates what we are trying to do. Um, there's all, also mention about historic. Um, the building itself obviously is not an attractive architecturally, but it's the person that was around that building and what events occurred in that building makes it historic. So that's another avenue too that was mentioned to me. If the building was deemed historic, there were ways around you know, the flood and that sort of thing. That's what I was told. Like I said, I cannot I get a clear answer. I think once the building answer. falls into that level of disrepair, then, I mean, that's the whole issue with everything that we mm -hmm. have in the floodplain. It can't be rebuilt. And okay. That, that, that's, you know, the issue that we've had. And I think Mr. Stewart contends that there's not enough of that building to deem it a building mm -hmm. because it's in such disrepair. Right. Even if, I thought someone had mentioned if there's 50% of that structure remaining, because we can go in, like I said, Wasco said that they would come in and do steel rods and put concrete to stabilize it. And so essentially it's just kind of, you know, the outer walls of the building. Um, again, we're very appreciative. You know, I didn't come on board until much later, but we're very appreciative of your extensions and that sort of thing. And I know it looks like we've not done a whole lot, but we have been working, you know, a lot of times it's dead ends. Um, I do think it's an asset. I mean, I remember going into Randy's probably right before it closed um, in the 90s, you know, making purchases. I do think it would be, like I said, an asset, but there's a lot of work and we still believe in this project um, and hopefully we could get another extension um, just to kind of explore, you know, if we can stabilize the building and that sort of thing and possibly work out something with the owners if they would work with us and at least try to get money to stabilize it so that it's no longer a danger. What's the name of this council? <laughs> Here we go. I will, I'd like to say one other thing. I moved to Galton in the 70s, and uh, I lived in East Tennessee, and I lived in West Tennessee. And I will say on three different occasions when I told people I lived in Galton, the first thing that came out of their mouth is, that's where Randy's records is. But now, two of those three are dead now, so. <laughs> Well, that was a delicate way to make a point. <laughs> well, I'm just being honest. It's, it's, yeah. But there's you know. still a lot of those people that are okay. alive. Um, what's the will of this council? Unless you have any more questions. I'm not certain. Mr. Alexander, did you make I a did. motion? I did. Oh, I thought you said you'd be willing to make no, a motion. I said I, I made a mo I'm, ma I'm making a motion to have the building demolished uh, because this can't be repaired. Have a motion by Councilman Alexander. Second. Second by Councilman Hayes for discussion. I mean, why are we so long with this, y'all? Look how long we've been doing this. It, it makes no sense. No. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm right. I, I'm right, Mr. Griffin. I know it probably don't sound, but I'm right you and your efforts. But you, you, uh, well, you just playing a losing battle. Yeah. But well, you, can I say one thing? Well, we got a motion and second on We do. It's for the, uh, probably for this body to discuss at this point. They'll let you know if they have a question. <laughs> so you don't want me to. Council? We have a motion and a second for the purposes of discussion. I think everybody pretty much has said what they're going to say. I mean, it's just. I just feel. I, I mean, I, I just. I have an offer out there, too, remember? <laughs> Remember? No. To help. I bet Miss Love would help. <laughs> You've got a few weeks before you go back to school. Y'all have, have, you've had a whole year to help. Why well, no, you? because we've been trying to let this group of citizens do it. I mean, and it was not appropriate yeah, to interfere, and uh -huh. so now I'm publicly offering to interfere. Can, can I, I think Tisha would accept that. I would accept, and like I said, the previous people working on this project are no longer involved, and I would have accepted your help if I would have been spearheading it at that point, so that's all I want to say to that matter. Yeah. <coughs> More time. More time. Try, try and figure out a fundraiser, try and figure out some avenues for some grants, figure out... I spare tip. Did you want to say so? Well, I, I came here in the 70s like Steve did. And actually, I got a story like Steve's. 
I was in Detroit, Michigan, going through customs at the airport. This guy was looking at the passport, and he says, you from Galton, Tennessee? I said, yes. He said, well, do you know Randy's record store? I said, yes. I said, it was pretty much gone when I got there, but I said, I know about Randy's record store. He said, I used to drive up on a hill every Saturday night and listen to Randy's record store show of some kind. I don't know what he had. There is a lot of history out here. I'm semi-hipper buff, not a big history buff. <clears throat> My thing is, is the same thing as what you, these people have been saying. They have not suck, see, seeked out any help that's where they need to seek it from. They, they need some leadership. They need somebody to direct them through their leadership. And I don't know, I don't know if they got the capability to get that or not. And I'm also a little bit like Craig and maybe you. I'm not sure that it's going to be the big hit in, uh -huh. in Gallatin because I remember going to it, but you know, uh, people that are younger probably don't. People uh -huh. that are a lot older than me think of it as being on the square. Uh -huh. Well, one thing that, I mean, one thing that compelled me, and this was from our discussion today that I had not really thought about, was the tie of Randy Woods to African-American artists and how that helped those African-American artists become mainstream. And so for that, I think it may have some significance beyond just people that remember Randy's records or people that like vinyl or whatever. And so that's why I'm thinking that through that there may be some avenues for some funding that um, you know they may not have thought to or really even probably had awareness to seek out. And I don't have a lot, but I think I could probably find some and figure out if there's that person that can identify this as a significant contribution to particularly black music history that may be willing to put out some big money. So, Mayor, do I hear you, and, and I think Mr. Fan both, and y'all tell me if I'm wrong, but I hear y'all saying that y'all want to give them a little bit of time to see if there's something else out there they can do? Well, he, he can't really because he's one of the property owners. Well, he, he's not going to vote on it, I understand, but he can give but, his opinion. Well, I'm not going to vote either, but um, I'm just, I, I mean, for the first time I'm saying I, I might have some ideas. They might crash and burn, but given me the opportunity to pursue some of these paths but, in my brain. But here's what I'm hearing you saying. All right, there might be some ideas, but just a minute ago you agreed with me. You don't think it's really going to be a no, I'm not, I, tourist I, I, attraction. I don't know that it is going to be a tourist attraction. I do yeah. agree with that. I absolutely yeah. agree with that. But I think that there could be some historical significance that would make it important to, to preserve as a show, and it might be, I mean, this might evolve into something where it has a visitor center and some record showcase associated with it, but the building would be preserved, and you could say that is where, you and know. And then who takes care of the building after it's I done? don't know those things. We don't have that that plan. We don't have, I, I, I don't know what that is. I mean, I don't know. A non-profit should. Yeah. A non-profit non -profit association should. The city, I don't, I don't want the city taking care of it. I don't want the city, you know, I don't, I don't see that in the future, but, and I, and I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I feel like that's an avenue that may not have been explored and I hate to tear the building down before we know. You, you, after a while, you won't have to tear it down. It's you're right. fall down. I mean, you're it, right. it just don't make sense, y'all. You're right. It don't make no sense. Well, I've made an offer, so it's council vote, so not I. I'll, I'll, I'll say again. It's to our advantage to go ahead, and, Michelle and I, to go ahead and get tore out and do what we're going to do or whatever that's going to be. But we're willing to wait if the council wants to give you an extension. Okay, we have a motion and a second, but I'm not really sure what that motion and second is beyond to tear it down. What is the time frame on that? Or declare it a dangerous building or whatever well, it is. It's we're already been declared a dangerous right. building, okay. so the city would have to give a time frame for the owners to demolish the building or the city would come in and demolish. Okay. So you could give some time in that order. Yeah. But the motion is to, is to demolish. Yeah. So I think if you're wanting to give an extension, um, those are counterproductive. Well, I don't disagree, but council? <coughs> 
We have a motion and a second. With that, I will call for a vote. Um, Ms. Kidford, would you take a voice vote on this, please? Vice Mayor Camp. Explain to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to make sure about it. If we vote yes, then we'll turn the building down. Right? It's to demolish, but you've not yeah. set the time yeah. frame yet. Yeah, uh, I'm just wondering, but as soon as it starts saying it, if we vote no, that means we're going to yeah. start to set up a time frame. Well, if you vote no, then you're not ordering yeah. them to demolish at this yeah. point. Yeah. I'm going to say no. Mr. No, sir, Alexander. we're voting. <laughs> Sit down. Mr. Alexander. Mr. Fan. Oh. Abstain. Mr. Hayes. Yes. Miss Love. No. Mr. Overton. <laughs> it's tough. Oh, um, yes. Okay, the motion, the um, the uh, motion to demolish passes three to two. So that means that this council needs to proceed forward with setting a time frame for that. Uh, recommendation from Mrs. Stewart, would enough. Because we had to contact the owner first. Been here for a year. I know, but what I'm saying, I, uh, correct me, uh, see the term, but don't we have to inform uh, the owners uh, or of our intent to? Yeah, I'm also looking at it has to pass by a majority of those present, and if there is one abstention, so there's a three to two, but there are six people, and abstention, some I think will count as. A, as a no. As a yes. As so it a, as a yes. A yes. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, it would. So that right. would put it to four. Four to two. So it would, does pass. Okay. So what's the guidance on how they set the time frame? Is there? Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stewart. Yeah. If you look back at what we've done on other structures in the city, we normally give them 30 days. To. Uh, Start the demo process. Can we extend that to 90? It's up to you. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see. I mean, I'd like to see us extend that. You know, if we know in case I can. Yeah. I like the motion. We'll give them 90 days. Yeah. Okay. I just like to say something. 90 days may not be enough. Depends on how busy these guys are. Say, Susan? Oh, as far as getting it done. Yeah, because I've talked to some of them. Well, that would behind. be up to the property owner to come forward and plead their case yeah. if they can't make it in 90 days. We'll, we'll I'll second Jim's motion now. Can we do that? Yes, you can give them 90 days to demolish the building. You can give them whatever you want based okay. on Mr. Stewart's uh, recommendation. We we'll waited a year, so 90 days not going to hurt us, okay? Well, I'm confused, and I think Susan was too, because if we're devoted to demolish it, what are what is Paige going to do in that? <laughs> I mean, I mean, why, why are you working on getting some Well, uh, not maybe not just that piece of it, but say he could preserve those three outer walls. Um, and I think he's saying the time frame to actually get someone to be able to demolish it. So. I've talked to three different demolition guys and they're all behind and they won't give you an exact start date. Okay. So. I was thinking about what you said about making a call. And that was just me personally, <laughs> seeing if I could pull a rabbit out of a hat, you know? If there's a uh, rabbit that jumps out of a hat that they can yeah. give my money. Or money. And build this building back. Yeah. Okay, so we got 90 days first second. So you got 90 days. Yeah, I, the motion. Um, on the floor. But who made the motion? I'm sorry. Amy and Grace. Okay. Okay. I said 90 days. Motion by Councilman Everton, second by Councilman Hayes. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Okay, it does pass unanimously. There will be 90 days to demolition. That concludes the regular agenda. Brings us now to other business, and we have a couple of items of other business. The first one I'm going to ask Ms. Hamakali to address with this council. Uh, 
am going to hand out a letter that was forwarded to me regarding our solicitation ordinances and to let this body know that the city will need to be amending its ordinances. Uh, I have worked with the recorder and city judge, Ms. Kittrell, uh, and we're going to try to come up with something that will um, work to make our ordinance constitutional. Um, the issue is the curfew, and there's also an issue with our do not solicit list, which I'm not as sold. There's no law um, cited in support of our do not solicit list being unconstitutional. After researching, I do think that we do need to amend the ordinance on the uh, time of the curfew, what the Supreme Court um, has ruled in recent cases that curfew of 7 p.m. is what we currently have and that has been deemed unconstitutional. So I have um, reached out to MPAS and some other city attorneys across the state to see what their ordinances are and I have also reached out to this firm and have not heard back from them on the do not solicit registry. Who wants the pest control knocking on the door at 9 o'clock at night? Oh, no, it's absurd. I, Evidently, I, I, the Supreme Court absurd. says that it's a that's right, absurd. so we have absurd. to follow what the Supreme Court says, whether we like it or not. We don't like it. And they came to my house last week, and I didn't answer the door. So I understand, but we do have to make sure our ordinances are, are constitutional. Okay. Or we you don't have to amend them, and we can go to court, and a city in Colorado had to pay a half a million dollars in attorney's fees. And I got a call on my, right before this meeting from a neighbor that wanted to know who was knocking on the door selling stuff. I mean, it is so aggravating. And of course, the solution is, is no, maybe I, I shouldn't say that from this seat, the solution is, is not to buy anything. We need to get constitutional. Ever. Do that, we have to do that. Yeah, so that's bad news. Everybody understand what's up? Yeah. Okay, the next item is Ms. Um, Nichols has put a resolution on your desk. I don't know if she wants to bring it up or she wants me to bring it up. I'm sorry, it's an ordinance. And this is related to the purchase of the three properties, Coles Ferry property, the East Main property, and the Station Camp property, and this is allocating the funds for the purchase of those. Mm. So. Motion approved. Thank you. Motion by Councilman Overton. Second. Second by Councilwoman Love. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed, please say no. No. Okay. Uh, voice vote, please, Ms. Kittrell. It's 42. 42. It's not 42. It was 42. It was not 42, Ms. Kittrell. Vice Mayor Camp. No. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Fan. Yes. Mr. Hayes. No. Ms. Love. Mr. Overton? Yes. Well, y'all are right. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Right. okay. Well, no, I had heard it from both sides that it was 4 to 2. Okay, it passes 4 to 2. Well, thank you. Um, and so, any other, other business this evening? Okay. Yes, we will have second reading um, in two weeks. And I'm. Okay. And, and I should have said before we did this that we should have had permission to bring it forward without it going to um, work session. But I assume that this council is okay with that since you'd already voted on the no, purchase. No, not really. But, yeah. but I, am, I am delighted that we're able to move forward on that. Um, now on to other business. Ms. Love? I just wanted to ask um, David, Gra David Brown a question, which... David, I asked you to check on water fountains for the park back in May, and I wondered if you had ever found out anything about putting some in. We are looking at a few to put in. We do have one at the dog park now. We have one at the disc golf course, and we're looking at some more. The, the problem is there's not water lines throughout the park, like on the Greenway or whatever. There's no water lines. So we have to work out getting some water lines run. I think you can get some in the playgrounds, for sure. I mean, especially at the playground. We're, we're working the on all park. the little sectors. There, there is one at the pavilion where there's a water fountain down there, and the bathrooms are there. So you have. So you're working on it. We're working on it. Thank you, Mr. Everton. 
Mayor, thank you. I just got two announcements real quick that I want to be sure everybody's aware of. The fishing derby has been moved to the 20th oh, that's of July. Right. I forgot about that. Uh, for, for please come out and join that. I think WSM is sponsoring that, and uh, they they made that to the moved that to the 20th. So it's a free fishing day and a fishing <coughs> derby. And also Liberty Baptist Church is having their uh, fish fry on July 13th from two to six, and invites everybody out to that. So. Yeah, that fish and derby is going to be really awesome. Actually, yeah. I don't go that far on my calendar. I saw it on yeah. there. So. I just want to make sure everybody knew about it. Okay. Anything else from the council this evening? Okay, now we'll move to public recognition on non-agenda-related items. This is the time of the meeting where people can come forward to address something that's not on the agenda. Again, give us your name, address, and please limit your comments to five minutes. Oh, good evening. It's Mr. Reiners at 317 Malone Drive. I just want to say, if you quit adding toxic fluoride waste to our drinking water for 16 years at $25,000 a year, you could pay their million dollars. Okay. The problem I got with this city is, for one, your police are violating more laws than your citizens are. Okay. I got body cams, dash cams that aren't being recorded under policy. Um, uh, what else we got? Um, recordings, audio recordings that are supposed to be made to protect the police department and their citizens that aren't being recorded. Okay? So the, these police departments that are supposed to protect the people are, are actually harassing the people. And I'm telling you guys, I'm not playing. I'm, I'm not playing with you guys. I, I, I like you, Miss Love. I like you, Miss, Miss Brown. I like you, Mr. Alexander, Mr. Fan. I never met you before, Mr. Hayes. No real opinion on that one. Mr. Camp, I like you. <laughs> Cotty, I like you too. And actually, I like Chief Bandy. He put me in a good position to to put put a city in their place because I'm not playing with the corrupt. Okay, you all could help this record company. You all have the funds to help the record company. You need to help the record company. All right. You need to take the floor out of the water and put the money you spend on it and pay for the record company. All right. Because every day I want every dash cam, every body cam, every recording from every officer. And if I don't get it, you're obstructing justice. And I'm going to the federal courthouse and I'm pressing charges on your police. Bye. Anyone else wishing to speak under public recognition on non agenda related items? Um. I suspect you'll have cheerier greetings. Mm -hmm. I said, I suspect you'll have cheerier greetings. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Joe DeBoer, and I live at 1007 Hart Street in Gallatin, Tennessee. My little deal tonight is this. The mayor is a number one promoter, period. I mean, she's all to the point of having something on me that promotes the city of Gallatin. So I, mean, she, I did not. Hey, I've got to insert a disclaimer. I did not dress Mr. DeBoer this <laughs> evening. Yeah, I know you did, Mayor, because it's the right way to go. Now, with that, I have a, I have something I need to get to Miss Connie. She takes money. She's good at that. Got any more to pass around, Joe? No, Mr. Jimmy, what this deal's all about is your wastewater. That is my total fee for the year. You don't have to go looking for it. You don't have to go $9 a month. It's already there, and you can go ahead and spend it. That is your budget for the wastewater. Okay, from me for the year. Thank you, Mr. Joe. I, I, I know you are, Jimmy. <laughs> but here's the catch. I want to follow up on one thing, Mr. Jimmy. I'll pick on you because I like you. And, and that is, uh, did we pay Peter to pay Paul? Did we pay uh, back the, uh, the, uh, the big kitty in order to take care of our wastewater deal this, this past year for it to have its budget, it to have its people, it to have its equipment? Did we pay that back from the fees that we got? Uh, that is supposed to be a, uh, 
supposed to be a self-perpetuating operation. In other words, the money I give from me right there is what we do to pay for those fees, period. And it should also help pay for the building out there that Brother Hayes fussed about from now to Christmas time. And uh, we want to make sure that that is taken care of out of those fees. Also, the the uh, salaries of uh, the people be uh, be prepaid needs to be paid back. Uh, this city has a little bad history along that line. I've heard tales about other things that uh, goes wrong, but we don't need to do that now because Mayor, you're the one in charge and you take care of business. I have so no clue what you're talking about, but all right. Okay. Well, they, they rob from Peter to pay Paul, and they don't pay him back. Mm -hmm. That's what the problem is. So we got to make sure that's doing. Thank you. Anyway, that's all I got to say, except uh, I got a question. When y'all going to put my sidewalk in front of my house? Do I have to pay for it? That's that. Hey, that would help. You want me to pay for it, Mayor? Help. Hey, all I need to do is, is get Buck back there off his dairy yard and come by and fix me up. I've always said if anyone's interested in a sidewalk on their street, if they'll get all their neighbors to agree to it and donate the property, we're way ahead of the game. Wait Bring a minute, honey. Street. You, we're all way ahead of the game on that in my neighborhood because right. guess what? In front of my house, the, 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 the rock it's gotta stale. The it's it's got to be the whole street, though. It can't no, 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 no. See, see, here's the catch. You go over here with New Bill. I noticed over on, on uh, uh, Red River. yeah, Red River, wherever. Anytime, anytime you have a, a company comes in and they build something, you got to put a sidewalk in. What's the difference of me putting my sidewalk in? No, that that's not cost effective for the city to do individual properties. Well, now, now, now Mayor, now, Mayor, you need to be able to to have a sidewalk in front of the house. You get all your neighbors to agree to it and come back. I bet we could. We've got the land. We've got the land because you you got it. You got the land in front of the house. It's yours. Yeah. I've got I've got the base down out there in front of the house too. I don't know what the right of way is on your street. Yeah. All right. it, this the, comment. I'm not supposed to be like discussing with you. I know all about that, but we have a good time. So I'm just going to leave that with you to figure it out and get Buck out there. He he knows all the story. He's Which the man. Elevator. I don't have it in front of mine either. Huh? I don't have him in front of my Well, head. some people don't want it. I don't have him in front of my head. Well, you got a ditch in front of yours. I don't, thank God. I don't have a ditch either. I can park a big rig in front of my house and I have to worry about it. <laughs> All right. Later. Thank you, Mr. Board. Anyone else for public comment on items that were not on this evening's agenda? All right. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion second on favor say aye. We're adjourned. I wish everyone a very happy Independence Day. May you celebrate it and remember our freedom.